let's go through my old stuff together. Hello everyone and happy new year. It has been a bit since I uh, made a video. I cut my hair shorter again. Like who knows how short I'm going to keep cutting it. Like the next time you see me, maybe I'll just be bald. So I'm sorry if I'm like playing with it a lot. I'm still just like getting used to it. It's weird, like sometimes I look back on my old videos and my hair is like down to here and I don't even recognize that person. Also, my roots are so terrible. I'm really wanting to like get rid of the dye that's in my hair and go back to my natural hair color, which is this like sandy brown. But anyways, I was doing a bit of reflecting the other day. I feel like when it's the new year, that's what people do. <laughs> you know, they make their resolutions, do some reflecting. And so I thought it would be kind of fun just to go through some of my old bracelets that I have made, I think years ago. <laughs> I'm not going to be showing you guys anything that's available on my Etsy right now, just because you guys can already see that. So like, what's the fun in that? But I do have these old boxes full of string and old bracelets. I know that this sewing kit has like a lot of uh, recycled string as well as some floss from Amazon I just stuffed in there. And I do have some old projects in this bin which you can already sort of see. And I do have some more projects in this bin as well. So yeah, I don't know. I figured since I've had this channel for about a year now, it would just be like maybe something fun that we could do, something a little bit different. And I also just wanted to take a sec to thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. This has been such a fun experience to have this channel and to make these videos for you guys. And I really want to keep up with it this year. I know I challenged myself last year to make a video every month and I did not accomplish that. But you know what, 2020 was a hard year and nobody knew what we were in for, okay? So let's just jump right in, shall we? So I actually think that this bin is full of stuff that I made um, last year. So right on top we have this uh, Yoshi Story bracelet. This is probably one of my favorite bracelets that I've made, to be honest. It's way back on my Instagram if you want to go find it. But it was like way before I kind of had like a look to my Instagram, so you'd have to scroll back kind of far to find it. And this was also when I used pearl cotton for every single bracelet I made. I don't know why, I had like this bias against embroidery floss because when I first started making friendship bracelets, the embroidery floss would always like break while I was making my alphas, so I was like, it's not strong enough, I have to get the pearl cotton, which is more expensive and you can't get as many colors in it. But I have uh, I have learned how to make better alphas since then, so now I use embroidery floss and not this pearl cotton, but it does look really good. I was planning on framing it, which is what I used to do with all of my alpha braces, because I didn't really know what to do with them, it was before I put them on wall hangings and stuff like that. So I was going to frame it and I never got around to it, but maybe I will. Maybe now that I've pulled it out, maybe I'll keep it out. And this was also when I just used to put tape on the back of my bracelets because, like I said, if I was just going to be framing them, I didn't really care about like gluing them or anything. I'd just put some tape on it. Okay, moving on. So this was a... It's upside down. Let's try that again. Here is a huge keychain I made for a bracelet competition last year. The theme was animals, so I just kind of looked on the internet for lots of different animals and I decided on this really cute sloth pattern. And I ran out of like this pink you can see in the background, so I finished it off with this lighter pink because the closest Michaels to me is like an hour away, okay? So it's not it's not accessible. So I just did what I could and I think that's fine. Yeah, this keychain is huge. I don't know who would actually use this as a keychain. Hold on. Like tell me that's not a little ridiculous, right? So yeah, I think we'll put this one back in the box. It's cute, but it could be better. And that keychain was also made with pearl cotton, I just want to point out. And moving on to this nice plant bracelet. This is actually really cute. When I first made it, I didn't really like it that much. And I think it was just because I used, whoa, I used the pearl cotton instead of the embroidery floss. So I feel like it was just a little bit too textured for my liking. But I think it actually turned out really good. There's the back. And I was going to do this bracelet for a collab with somebody on Instagram, but that didn't pan out, so that's okay. So this was actually a small set of bracelets I made last year, and uh, I was just testing out some thread that I got from Amazon. I just wanted to see what it was like. This was also my first fishbone bracelet, I think that's what it's called. And this one here, I attempted the zigzag pattern, but I did cut my strings a little bit too short, but I wasn't too concerned about it. I just kind of wanted to move on so I just tied off the ends and threw it in a box. Oh look, I just found this in the box. It looks like I started it using different colors 
and then I decided to use a better green. So now it looks like the rest of this box is just unfinished projects and you can bet your bottom dollar that they're all normal patterns because I hate finishing normal patterns because they take forever to finish and they're so repetitive. Here's this nice pink one with some X's. This is actually a really cute bracelet. I should finish this. I mean my province is back on lockdown so I, I have time. And this was a bracelet I found on friendshipbracelets.net, which is the website I always used when I was in high school. That was the first bracelet site that I found when I started getting into making friendship bracelets. So friendshipbracelets.net will always have a close place in my heart. This was a huge normal bracelet that I started last year or the year before maybe, I can't even remember. Um, it's really pretty, but it was also really, really complicated to follow. The pattern, first of all, is huge. So the diagram, like the knots are so, so small and it's so hard to see them. I actually wrote out all of the steps like in pencil. Let me see if I can find it. So I wrote out all of the steps in pencil and these aren't even all the steps. Those are all of the missing rows that I still had to write out, but I couldn't see anymore. So that's why that bracelet didn't get done. Sorry, I'm feeling this really like chaotic energy right now, so I'm, I'm sorry if it's making you uncomfortable. So if you've been watching my video since the beginning, you'll know that this was our first Not Like Me challenge bracelet. I, I wasn't really like excited about this pattern, but it is a pattern that I really like just because of the sentimental value it has for me. It actually looks pretty cute on camera. Like when I pull it away, like that has a nice gradient effect. And it's a really simple bracelet to make too. Here we have a rainbow fish bone bracelet that I never finished. A bracelet that I started and got to hear and realized that I miscounted the strings completely and uh, couldn't finish it. And here we have this kind of like inverted arrowhead pattern. And I actually really love this pattern and that's why I didn't finish this bracelet. I was making a bunch of these because I had memorized the pattern, but I couldn't find it anymore and I knew that this was the last one I wanted to make, but I didn't finish it just so I would be able to figure out the pattern still with all of the strings still in the same place. But it's funny, I totally forgot about this bracelet until this moment, so so much for that plan because now it's just in a box. And we're just coming up to the last bracelet in this box here. Uh, this is the first bracelet I did a time lapse with on my Instagram. I post all of my time lapses obviously on my YouTube channel now, but I did post my first one on Instagram and this is the bracelet I did it with. I wasn't really happy with the colors or the way the pattern was turning out. This was supposed to be more of a straight line and you can see it's a little bit like all over the place. So I didn't finish it. So moving along to the next box I have, this is actually a sewing box that my mom gave me. It's very nostalgic for me seeing this box just because growing up it was always the box that my mom grabbed if she needed any sewing materials or sewing supplies. So, And I could be wrong, but I think it also belonged to my grandmother. So I'm gonna keep this forever, I think. And I also just love this pattern so much when I see like luggage or bags with this like old lady print, I guess you could call it. I just love it so much. Okay, so now we're getting into some really old bracelets, like really old. So the first bracelet I have pulled out, I think I made it in 2014, so maybe six years ago now, so it's kind of dirty. It's this Zelda themed bracelet. We have your health hearts here with a few of them missing, took a little bit of damage. And of course, Navi on the end being like, hey, listen. And this is sadly one of those bracelets I made for a commission, but was sadly never picked up by the customer. So now it's just been sitting in my box for years. So you may have seen my time lapse of my Pikachu wall hanging. And to be honest, that is not my first time making a Pikachu before. This was actually my first time making a Pikachu. And of course, back to using that pearl cotton. And I had attached all of my strings here to this little uh, bracelet loop thing. Like the other end has a metal bar that you stick through and can wear it as a bracelet. And that's how I used to try and make them. And I literally just tied all of my base strings in a knot. So you can see like it's it has like this weird curve here and I would try and start on a straight line just right after tying this knot. And that was very frustrating for me. It's just so funny because now I know 
how to do bracelets like this and how to start using my base strings in a way that's not going to make my bracelet all like wonky like this. Like this was back before I knew how to do like loops or anything like that. So it is kind of cool to go back and see the progression of these bracelets and how much better I've gotten over the past few years to be honest. And this is another really old one guys. This one is probably from 2012 so we're going back to about eight or nine years ago now. And it's a little Pokeball bracelet. This is a normal bracelet as well. It's a normal pattern. And I remember making this like in the lunchroom at uh, one of my jobs back when I was in high school. So that it's really nostalgic to me too. And look at those ends. I've just tied them off and cut them. And this is the only way that you can wear the bracelet. It's still kind of cute, even though it's really dirty. <laughs> and while we're on the Pokemon theme, we do have a Nitto King that I started and never finished, sadly. Again, using that pearl cotton, tying all of my base strings in a knot and then getting kind of this wonky start here. And seeing all of these Pokemon patterns on friendshipbracelets.net when I was in high school is really what inspired me to start making friendship bracelets to begin with. Because if you know anything about me, you know I'm a huge fan of Nintendo. I really love Pokemon and Mario, anything like that. So there were so many of these patterns going around of different Pokemon when I was first getting into making friendship bracelets, so that was a huge inspiration for me to get started. Here's another really old bracelet I made probably in 2011 or 2012 when I was still in high school. It's this really pretty rainbow plaid bracelet. Again, I've just tied it off already and I wouldn't undo it because who knows if you can get it back together or not. It's also huge. I don't know whose wrist this is for. I remember being really proud of this bracelet after I finished it because it was the most complex, normal pattern that I had done. So I was really proud of myself for this one. And I do also just have this rainbow zigzag normal pattern I made when I was also in high school. This is something you could have seen me wearing every single day in high school. My whole arm was just like loaded up with bracelets. And we're coming to the close of this video, guys. We're nearing the end. So the rest of this box is literally just a bunch of bracelets that I had started and not finished. I love this pattern though. I wish I still had it. I don't. I definitely don't. So don't ask me. Just more patterns I didn't finish and that are kind of ugly. I hope you guys can see this okay. I hope there's not too much of a glare. And this is just a little Robin bracelet I made for Dylan a couple of years ago and I framed it for him, gave it to him. You can see I still have tied my base strings at the top there like a noob and it does hang in our office right now so that makes me feel good. It actually hangs right beside the famous Baby Yoda and that's all I have for you guys. I know I definitely had more bracelets in the past but over time and through moving so much they have gone missing or been thrown out but I'm really glad that I was able to share that with you guys, share what I could find. I don't know sometimes it's just really fun to go back and see how much you've grown and just to kind of laugh at yourself a little bit. And again, thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers on YouTube. I appreciate it so much. And be sure to follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. It's the same name as here, not like the others. And let me know what kind of videos you want to see from me. If you want any more tutorials or maybe something else, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. And before I run away, I just want to mention I did start another YouTube channel where I play The Sims 4. I can no longer hold in my Sims 4 obsession. So I will put the link in the description below. I'm doing speed builds, I'm doing let's plays and different challenges. So definitely check me out there, it's a fun time. Alright, I will see you guys next time. Bye!